So we saw before in the previous video that if I had five points and an associated conic with those five points, I could check if a six point lied on that conic. Here I want to do a different construction. Okay, I want to say the following. Let's take five points and let's think of the associated conic, although I will just draw it here for our own reference, but let's assume we actually don't have it. We actually don't have the drawing of that curve, much less its center. Okay, and what we're going after at some point is I want to determine using strictly synthetic or geometric means where the center of the conic that goes to five points lies. I'm here on GeoGebra. GeoGebra can easily take five points, draw this green curve, this beautiful green curve here, and can also identify where the center of the green curve is. Okay, but I'm only going to be using GeoGebra here for reference. Okay, we're not going to be relying on this curve at all. So what we want to know is uh, as a building step, you're going to see how this building step is going to help us get to the center of this conic. And later on, we're going to be identifying where foci lie and axes lie. So we're going to be increasing complexity. So the basic primitive that you need here is the following. You need to be able to draw a line through one of these five points. And this line can be in any direction. So let's just leave this line for now on a particular direction that I've chosen here. It doesn't matter what it is. And I want to be able to identify this chord here. What I'm trying to construct is a chord that connects P1 to the intersection with the green ellipse, uh, which is this point over here. But I don't have the continuous green curve. So what I'm going to show you now is a derivative of the Pascal theorem property that, are, that is going to allow us to build, to, to find this point here, which could be the sixth point on the conic. Okay, so let's now recap what we did in the previous uh, video. We said, okay, imagine I have six points, right? Let me leave this line on the drawing here. Okay, uh, we start by drawing a line between P1 and P2 and intersecting it. So let's assume again that we have that hexagon. And just for simplicity, I'm going to use the sort of counterclockwise uh, enumeration of these vertices. It's not necessary that this be the case. Okay, this is completely flexible, but I'm going to use this counterclockwise enumeration. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line from P1 to P2. And I'm going to intersect that line with the opposing side, which emanates from P4, P5. All right? Now let's, let's jiggle these points around a little bit so that this intersection can happen in a reasonable location here. Uh, let's go something like that. I'm going to jiggle this, this and maybe that. And now, yeah, I want everything to fit on the screen. I'm going to say, okay, this is my first intersection. And I'm going to label this intersection um, as we did before. Let's label this uh, 1, 2, cross 4, 5. There it is. Very good. Let's keep going with our Pascal construction. So now I need to do P2, P3. There's a line. Let's go ahead and blindly draw that line. And I'm going to look now for the opposing side of that pair. What is the opposing side? I have to skip two, right? So it would be P5, P6. Now my P6 is, should be at the intersection of this first construction line. Let's go ahead and change the color of this construction line here, which I'm going to color it blue for now. And I'm saying that this construction line can be oriented in any way I want. Okay, and I'm trying to determine this intersection, which I can think of as being P6. Okay, but what my construction, my Pascal construction is asking me to do is to intersect the P2, P3 line with the line P5, P6. I don't have P6. So I can't construct that line. So I'm going to go over to the next uh, step in the construction. Now I'm going to intersect P3, P4 with the line. What do I need? P6, P1. Now I don't have P6, P1, but I have the line, right? So the beautiful thing is I can intersect this. I can intersect P3, P4. I'm going to place this in a better location so we can see this intersection something uh, let's try to make it like that okay I'm just nudging these things around so we can 
facilitate the understanding of it. So again, this is the magical step. Even though I don't know where P6 lies, I've chosen a particular direction in the hopes that at some point this thing is going to allow me to actually identify this. So I actually have this intersection here. This keeps me in business. So this intersection here, which I'm going to mark manually and label, I'm going to be labeling this guy as 3, 4 with 1, 6, although I don't have 1, 6. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't, although I don't have the 6 vertex, but I have the line 1, 6. Correct? Okay. Now, let's go back to what we said before. For six points, for this point here to lie on the same conic, there's going to be there's going to have to be some collinearity, right? So I already have two points on something that I'm going to be imposing collinearity on. So let's draw this principal highway line here, Pascal highway line, and I'm going to color it as before in red, like so. And now what I'm going to say is, wherever the third intersection occurs, it must lie on this line. Now, how does this help me? Let's go back here to what, uh, what, what I had, you know, the, the step that I could not complete before. I was trying to, to uh, intersect line P2, P3 with line P5, P6, but I don't know where P6 lies. Okay? So I don't have this elusive line. But I do know that if I had it, they would have to intersect at a point that lies on the red curve, on the red uh, line. Meaning, I can simply look for a point on the line P3, P2, P2 and say, oh, the intersection must lie over here because this is the unique intersection of line P3, P2 with my Pascal highway. There it is. So this point here, and I'm going to label it, even though I still don't have P6, I'm going to label it as 2, 3 with my elusive 5, 6. There it is. Okay, so now I know at least where those lines must intersect. Now here's the beautiful and final checkmate. Okay, I don't know where P6 is, but I know that whichever line P5, P6 is on, that line must pass through this point. So I'm able to actually just draw that line. There you go. I can just draw this line. And this is the final magical line, which I'm going to actually draw... I'm just going to change its color to perhaps, I don't know, something to stand out. Let's make it be purple, like that. And this is my final virtual line. Now look at the magic here. The magic is that the intersection of P1 with the unknown P6, so this, this direction that I've chosen, which can be anywhere, okay, this line that emanates from P1 in some uh, chosen direction. Notice that this line... Um, intersects the line that goes from P5 to that place there. Okay, and it intersects precisely in a point on the green curve. Okay, now just for illustration, I'm going to hide the green curve from our simulation. And I'm going to say I'm only interested in this intersection over here, which I'm going to call tentatively P6, like so. And I'm going to color this P6 with the same color with this um, purple color. Now, let's see what happens. And GeoGebra allows me to do this. Okay, To the locus of P6, as I move this point over here, right? as I move this point, keeping everybody else 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fixed, I want to know what the locus of P6 is as I change the direction of the line that is going through P1. So I'm going to... Uh, show the trace of P6, and I'm going to simply sweep uh, all kinds of directions uh, for that blue construction line. And you can see here that as I do that, I'm basically sweeping the conic that is defined by P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. So in the end, what does this construction allow me to do? Okay, and uh, before we actually finalize, let's bring that conic back on. You can see here that the dots that were tracked lie precisely on that conic, okay? Even though I don't have it. I don't have that conic. I don't have that continuous curve. And if you go back to antiquity, 
this is one thing that the, the Greeks and others that uh, work with geometry and, and antiquity, uh, they basically established a rule that was we do not have curves uh, unless we can build them with uh, a straight edge and a compass. Okay. Now, if you notice here, we didn't even use a compass. We just used a straight edge to build um, a point P6 on this elusive curve okay, that lies along a chosen direction. Okay, so recapping, you know, this is a powerful, a powerful tool that we just built here. Okay, I'm going to take a point that lies on a conic. I don't need a conic, and I'm going to elect a chosen direction through that point. And I've just uh, described here a Pascal-based method to identify or, or, or construct a point P6, which lies on that conic along that chosen direction. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to see how we use this to now finally compute or locate the center of this conic, even though I can never construct a conic or I will never construct a conic. Very good. So I'll see you on the next video.